Uh, thank you, Billy Shaheen. Where did you just go? Right um, thank you. I, I have to thank my family too, and I'll tell you more about them in a little bit. But thank you, Tom and Mom and Meg and Ben. And you got Mary and Joyce and Liz up here too. They're all part of our family. So thank you. Thanks to all of you for your hard work and dedication throughout this primary campaign. And thank you to the people of New Hampshire for tonight's victory. But tonight, tonight is just the beginning of our efforts. Working together over the next 56 days, we can and we will put our path, state on the right path. I spoke a few moments ago with Jackie Silly, and I congratulate her and Bill Kennedy for running great campaigns. to join this campaign to move our state in the right direction for middle-class families. Let me also take a minute to congratulate Ovid LaMontagne on his primary victory tonight. We offer two very different visions for New Hampshire, and I look forward to a serious debate on the issues. We offer two very. There is a clear choice in this election, and I look forward to. A and I think we'll wait a minute to figure out how to do that. That's right. We're saying it twice. There is a clear choice in this election. As governor, I will move New Hampshire forward with an innovation plan that will help our businesses grow so that our families can succeed. As governor, I will maintain and build our competitive advantages as New Hampshire is the best place in America to do business. And let me be very clear, I will veto an income or a sales tax. the self-proclaimed Tea Party favorite, will move our state backwards with divisive policies that hurt our economy, limit opportunity for middle-class families, and restrict individual freedoms. For our families and our state to thrive in the future, we must come together to make New Hampshire an innovative, job-creating state with the best economy and best workforce in the nation. That's, that's what my innovation plan does, and that's what I will do as governor. I worked with Governor Lynch to help businesses grow. We created the Research and Development Tax Credit to encourage businesses to invest in New Hampshire. We established a job training fund that has helped nearly 14,000 workers at hundreds of companies upgrade their skills. And we created New Hampshire Working to make it easier for employers to hire new workers and to avoid layoffs. As governor, I will double the research and development tax credit to encourage more companies to invest in the <laughs> And I will help sell New Hampshire and its products across the nation and around the world. We will help 
provide our businesses with technical support that they need, including access to the research expertise of our public colleges and universities, because that's the New Hampshire way. At a time, at a time when college education is more important than ever, this legislature cut funding for higher education in half. <laughs> forcing huge tuition increases on our middle-class families. My opponent said tuition costs are not of the utmost concern to him. Ooh. That's the Tea Party way. Well, the cost of tuition matters to me. that are depending on a well-educated workforce to succeed. And it certainly matters to families across New Hampshire. My innovation plan begins restoring funding for our public colleges and universities in exchange for a freeze on tuition and more slots for New Hampshire students. Yeah. of dollars in taxpayer money to private and religious schools. My opponent says he opposes universal kindergarten because if the legislature provides kindergarten for every child, oh my goodness, what could come next? <laughs> That's the Tea Party way. Well, I will tell you what comes next if I become governor. Public money going to public schools. Yeah. 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 And better science and math standards so that New Hampshire is building the homegrown workforce that our businesses need. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to leave a lot of you to get kindergarten. And if I'm governor, we're going to keep kindergarten. Yeah. our kids is smoke more, study less, because that's the Tea Party way. In the middle of a tough recession, I worked with Governor Lynch to balance the state budget. We made tough and innovative choices to make sure we funded our priorities, education, health care, and public safety. We streamlined programs, we closed buildings, and we left a surplus. Yes. As governor, that's why you can clap for Christmas. As governor, I'll demonstrate that same sense of fiscal responsibility. We'll make the tough choices so we can invest in our priorities. And I will veto an income or a sales tax because that's the new answer. has cut health care for thousands of New Hampshire citizens. It even tried to repeal a 12-year-old law that requires insurance companies to cover birth control. That repeal would have raised health care costs for women across the state. Now this legislature and my opponent have a plan for a state takeover of Medicare. Medicare for our seniors. It's a plan that could increase health care costs for our seniors by thousands of dollars a year. That's the Tea Party way. 
I've worked with Democrats and Republicans to end the ability of insurance companies to discriminate against sick workers and to pass a law that let young people stay on their parents' health insurance till age 26. Yes. I'm going to keep fighting to make sure that our citizens have the health care they need at a price they and businesses can afford. That starts with stopping any legislative takeover of Medicare. Because that's the new Hampshire law. This legislature believes that live free or die means that it's wrong to ensure that oil companies actually deliver the oil that a consumer bought. That it's okay to charge consumers 300% interest on payday loans. That students can carry guns in their dorm rooms. Under my opponent's version of live free or die, abortion would be illegal even for the victims of rape or incest. And women and their doctors would be treated as criminals. Under my opponent's version of live free or die, Creationism could be taught in our schools. And under my opponent's version, the state would be able to prevent loving couples from marrying. That's the Tea Party way. Well, I believe live free or die means that workers should have the right to organize. All of us should have the right to marry. That's live free or die. That's what I will fight for. And that's the New Hampshire way. And that's what's at stake in this election. Tonight, I can't help but think about how I got involved in politics. My family. I want to take a minute to introduce behind me my mom, Peggy Wood, a school teacher who taught me to be a principal. Our daughter Meg is a sophomore in college and you all see our son Ben. Ben is smart and he is funny. He's a high school graduate. He also happens to have severe physical disabilities. But he went to kindergarten with all the other kids in the neighborhood and he graduated from high school. He goes out and he hangs out with his friends. He has brought wonderful people into our family, too. Joyce Averill, who's up here, who has cared for Ben for 23 years. Oh. Liz Halliday. Yeah. Liz Halliday, whose special friendship and relationship with Ben makes her another daughter to Tom and me. And Mary Cieslick, who is one of Ben's very able and capable nurses. It's a story, our family's story, is a New Hampshire story. It's a story of a state that says everyone should be included, that invests in meeting its responsibilities. It's a story of a state where neighbors are there when you need a hand. It's that New Hampshire that made it possible for our family to chart our own course. That's the opportunity I want for every family in New Hampshire, no matter what its challenge. That's why I'm running for governor. And that's why I am asking for your help for every one of the next 56 days. So many of you 
have already given so much to this campaign. My amazing campaign staff, led by the insightful, capable, and wonderful Matt Burgess. Matt Burgess. We, have, we have hundreds of wonderful volunteers. My great friend and fiscal agent, Karen Pryor, and the entire Pryor family. next to my former fiscal agent, Linda Beck, <laughs> who saw me through five state Senate campaigns. Our great Senate Democratic leader, Sylvia Lan Larson. I don't know whether we have Manchester's Lou D'Alessandro here tonight, but he's been walking me around the town. Thank you, Lou. And all my friends in the New Hampshire Senate and the New Hampshire House, and to Kathy Sullivan as well, whose commitment is unwavering. Thank you all. members of organized labor who have supported this campaign, the Human Rights Campaign, Emily's List, and the Women's Campaign Fund. I'm asking for you. Yeah, we can applaud for all of those. I am asking all of you to double down in the next eight weeks. I need you to volunteer. I need you to donate. I need you to get involved because our state faces a clear choice in November. We can continue in the direction of Governor John Lynch, bringing people together to move New Hampshire forward, or we can go the direction of Speaker Bill O'Brien and the current legislature, where the needs, that's right, no. Where the needs of middle class families take a back seat to an extreme social agenda. Ovid LaMontagne tells us that he is New Hampshire. I think we are all New Hampshire. We are all New Hampshire teachers, police officers, firefighters, small business owners, families, students. Together, we can ensure every child can go to a good school and afford college. We can build a smarter government on a foundation of common sense and fiscal responsibility. Build a stronger economy on a vision of innovation and growth. And share for everyone in the liberties and rights that our state holds so dear. the New Hampshire way. That's what we can do together. I ask for your support and your vote to make it a reality. If you give me your time and energy over the next eight weeks, I will work every day for you for the next two years to make our state an even better place. Thank you so much.